Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the Art So Wonderful Show. I'm Bruce Wilson, Executive Director. I have incredible guests with me today. We'll we will talk with our guests in a few minutes. But I just want to give you some updates. Um, so um, Art So Wonderful is creating uh, our murals all around. Well, we're recreating, we're redesigning them because 60% of, of the murals in Burlington are through Art So Wonderful. And we loved our murals. You know, a lot of people love them. We also created Art So Wonderful Electric Boxes, which is called Art So Wonderful Electric Boxes, around primarily around Tinney County. And our partners do a lot as well. And those boxes, people love those electrical boxes that they see. And so my goal is to give artists an opportunity to showcase their talents in places that normally they they, well, it's not not as easy, you know. We're, if you want to do some art on a mural, you will probably be doing it, working on one this week. Um, and so, Art So Wonderful have over fifty awards for doing the work we do. We just reopened our new art gallery at the University Mall. It's called Art So Wonderful Gallery and Performing Center. And so um, we we're really happy about that. It's about around eight thousand square feet, and it's incredible art in there. Um, Wow, you know, I'm not an artist or a musician, but I love the art. When I sit in there, I just look all around the place, walk around, say, wow, look at this art, look at that art. So I'm inviting everyone to come to the Art So Wonderful Gallery and Performing Center in the University Mall next to Target. It's free to come in there, you know, it's nothing, you know, I think I will really hope that you bring your youth and your kids with you, your neighbors, and just sort of get a taste of what, um, Vermont artists have to offer and so now it's going to be some on our performance scene let me just finish saying that it's going to have like hip hop and rock shows and modern you know uh, open um, poetry slams and and we're going to be we are very very fortunate to, to be able to have Vermont Youth Symphony Youth Orchestra and Association with Mark so we're going to talk a lot about that now so Mark Pizar take it away sir how, how did you get involved in all this wonderful work Oh, well, I uh, moved to Vermont in uh, July of 2020, which, of course, was a, a really um, interesting time. Uh, I remember I had my audition to be the music director of the Vermont Youth Orchestra Association only a few months before that, in January of 2020. And uh, that was my first time ever in New England. So this was like a brand new adventure, brand new uh, scene for me. And I was walking down Church Street, and just the marketplace was was bustling, and there was a huge snowstorm that blasted uh, many, many inches of snow. Energy that was in a city, and how the weather didn't stop anybody. And also, I was just blown away by, uh, you know, the Ellie Long uh, Music Center oh, over yeah. in Colchester, because no it's doubt. a great space. Definitely. And I just thought, oh my gosh, the youth orchestra with a home base. So, um, you know, my audition went really well, and it was sort of like, uh, if they offered me this, uh, we, we've got we've to get over there. Yeah. We've got to get to this scene. So, um, the phone rang, and fortunately, I was offered the position wow. of music director. Wow. So, I did that, and then um, headed on down to uh, Burlington in the summer. But, of course, the summer of 2020 was very <laughs> Oh, God. COVID-19. <laughs> yeah. So, we're walking down the, the, you know, the street, and it's just barren and empty, and it looks like a ghost town. Uh, so, it was sort of an interesting, an interesting thing. Of course, like, you know, we had to reimagine how a youth orchestra was going to operate. Because it's, it's very jarring when the thing that you do for a living and the thing that gives you so much purpose, like orchestra for me, music for me, just all of a sudden becomes taboo, right? Like, oh, a, a bunch of people in a room that are, uh, you know, blowing air at each other. I mean, that is like so not cool during January or July of 2020. So we had to reimagine how we were doing things. And fortunately, we did. We had that Ellie Long Music Center space. Wow, so you know? nice. And, uh, you know, it's it's a huge space. And so yeah. I said, well, I think we can take our orchestral musicians and we can split them into four different constituencies. And, uh, you know, so they're in smaller groups. We can spread them out. We can have one-way foot traffic. We can have them wear masks and then pull down their mask and play. Right. So we came up with um, protocols based on all of the studies that came out. Right. Um, you know, the big national studies. Sure, sure. In the field. Yeah. And we came up with some ways to, uh, to still meaningfully have uh, musical experiences mm -hmm. for our kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was fortunate. I thought, you know, if you know, there's a chance that we're not going to be able to meet, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't right. know what my right. family's going right. to do. I don't know what our kids are going to do, our family's going to do. It's just like 
it was a whole lot of unknowns and uncertainties. Yeah. But you know, we didn't have any COVID in the building the first year. Right. We didn't have any cases. It was oh, and then also spectacular. Wow, because um, you're from like California or some, right? In yeah. somewhere around LA or, or um, yeah. Um, yeah, so so as I know, it was a big shock from coming from there to to a dag on Blizzard in, in Burlington, downtown on Church Street. Yeah, I, I know, man. You know, people are out there. They be out there. UVM students be out there with their shorts and flip flops, bro. <laughs> they 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 like, yeah, we out here. You know, we're doing our thing. You know, they love snowboarding and skiing. Probably one of the reasons why they went to um, St. Michael's um, Champlain College or UVM. You know, because of the you know you know the skiing uh, industries. Yeah, so close to the skiing yeah. uh, industries and all of that. That sort of stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, so being from California, of course, it was a very different climate, very different uh, just way of life. Yeah. And honestly, like, you know, I spent the first 30 years of my life there and didn't really see myself uh, moving away. But, you know, the life of a musician is kind of a nomadic yeah. one. Sure. And so, uh, you know, I did my doctorate at Arizona State University. And so that was my first uh, time really living outside of California. Mm -hmm. And what I found is that I really loved it. I loved the Phoenix area. Mm -hmm. I loved uh, being in the large metropolitan area. Mm -hmm. And I loved also being, you know, close enough that I could commute back and forth and do things in California still. So like I had a youth orchestra out there I was still mm -hmm. working with. My wife still was the concert master of a community orchestra in California. So we like sort of kept that connection going. And we were crazy doing that commute back and forth from Phoenix to LA. But I know. It sort of got it's our so feet good, wet though. with the whole, yeah, yeah, the whole like, getting out and trying something new and, and stepping outside of your comfort zone, doing something new. And so, um, you know, when you graduate with a doctorate in, in conducting, that opens up some possibilities to like, uh, you know, you can conduct professionally, you can teach at the college or university system, things like that. So I was applying for a whole lot of things. I got some uh, professional assistant chips uh, with some pre-professional orchestras and professional orchestras and did that for a few years. Um, we ended up moving to Cleveland where I had a college job. And uh, I was really, really loving Cleveland. I had a job with a professional orchestra as well as um, a college, Lake Erie College in uh, Lake County. Um, and I really, really was enjoying it. But of course, then I saw the job description for the, the BYOA position. Yeah, man. And I already had seven years of experience, uh, mm -hmm. you know, being the music director of youth orchestras under my belt. And it's just something about the energy with youth who are doing some of this music for the first man, time. Man, you get man. them all together and it's just uh, just watching their, their faces when they discover oh, their love for all that stuff. And it's like revisiting exactly yeah. how I felt when I did those things the first time. And it's, you, you just can't match that sort of feeling. No, you can't. And I, you know, I, I'm a youth service, one of the things, I'm a youth service provider. And so yeah. I work with youth from around this, primarily around the state, you know. And um, wow, just to see them at work doing the things they do and who they are is amazing. You know I mean, it's like so, so awesome to me. Um, and so, um, so Ellie Long, that building, man, um, it's like an oval shape at the top, right? And so how the sound in there, you know, I forget, I was in there for years, years ago. I forget exactly how it was, um, um, you know, I think I was in there with uh, St. Michael's or some, somebody was in there. But um, so how's the sound in that place, as far as, you know? Well, first of all, it's an amazing historic building, you know, like it, uh, the, the Buffalo Soldiers used to train their, um, their mm. horses in there. That was the old riding hall. Right. And so um, the old riding hall, uh, it, uh, they would ride the horses in there, but then the stables were elsewhere. And so uh, they would have events there and musical performances in the evenings. Mm. So I actually think it's pretty cool that now it's been retrofitted to, to still serve the same purpose, right? right. To like have musical performances. Right. Sure, sure. So um, that's pretty amazing. And the way that they did it is the, the back of the building is our performance hall. And we can seat up to 350 people in oh, there. Yeah. And the, uh, the space for the stage is quite large as well. I mean, I've seen full orchestras and choirs uh, on that stage before so you can have a really really big performance in there um and so uh the sound in there is is actually really great it's uh it's very live it reverberates super super well it's very rich um you can hear the the you know the violins and the high sounds super super easily wow yeah yeah so we uh we enjoy having our performances in there and i think we would do even more in there but you know uh f we are this is a good problem to have we are fortunate that more than 350 people want to come to most of our shows. It's too small. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's too small. Mm -hmm. So actually, we end something. up heading over to, uh, yeah. you know, the Flynn, 
which is where like it's our home away from home. I know, I know. You guys are like in you know in the Flint Theater. You know, I was there this year to hear you perform. Um, so so you're the music director, and music um, conductor, which both slash slash both, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, the way the VYOA is structured is we have three orchestras. So we have the Vermont Youth Orchestra, and I conduct that. And then we have the Vermont Youth Philharmonia, which is also a full orchestra. It has winds, brass, strings, and percussion. And then we have a, um, uh, a third orchestra called the Vermont Youth Strings. And that one is just for strings. And for many of those musicians, that's their first time getting a chance to play in a group setting. Because, um, you know, most school programs in the state of Vermont and throughout the country, frankly, um, have school band programs. So you got winds and brass and yeah. percussion in there. But it's far less common to have strings in wow. school oh, programs. Yeah. So we have some here in Chittenden County yeah. and elsewhere. But um, that's just fewer and farther between. Yeah. And that's not a Vermont thing. That's a national thing. Yeah. There are just less string programs. But there's a huge string culture here. There are lots of people from yeah. throughout the state that are playing instruments like violin and viola and cello and bass. And they're teaching it, too. So these kids are learning from, you know, little first graders. Yeah. They're learning how to play these instruments. Mm -hmm. And their first entry point to, like, actually play in a group setting amongst their peers is, like, in our group, the VYS, right. you know? Yeah. What, you know, you, you name some viol, vi, you know, vi, uh, violin, um, uh, uh, cello, like bass, and yeah. uh, rec, you know, guitars, rhythm, and you know, electric. What what other type of uh, string instruments are there? It's like it's, I know some, I seen some funky looking ones. Like, wow, what the heck is that? I mean, like people like some string instruments that look like incredible. You know, what I mean, and uh, like three strings or something. Or, yeah, yeah. Well, the ones that we have are the the violin, and then it's it's slightly larger uh, because in the viola, mm -hmm. and then the cello is the one you know between the legs, right. and then the one that you play standing up is the stand up bass oh, stand -up or the bass. double bass, double bass yeah. and that one has four strings, and it's the same uh, it's the same strings as on a violin but backwards. So they're like, you know, they, yeah. they're like the foundation, oh, the lowest okay. instrument that we have, right? Yeah. And then, of course, you have their sort of electric cousins, right? Yeah. You have like the electric bass and right. you have the guitar. Yeah. And those are, uh, you know, the, they belong to the family of plucked string instruments. Mm -hmm. But the ones that we typically deal with are the ones where you draw the bow across the string. So those are the, the bowed instruments. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, awesome. So I love, you know, I love it. And, and um, your woodwind instruments are, what are they? Which ones are, how are which ones are So the, the beginning. Yeah, the beginning of, of the families, the primary instruments that we call them are the, the flute, and then we have the oboe, and the clarinet, and the bassoon. So most people have heard of the flute, most people have heard of the clarinet, right? It, that's, uh, you play with a mouthpiece, and then you put a reed on it, and then uh, blow against that, and then that's what creates the vibration. But then there are the oboe and the bassoon. The oboe is much smaller, and the bassoon... You actually have to like put a seat strap underneath you and like suspend it oh, while you play it because yeah. it's so large. Oh, um, and those two instruments are called double reed instruments. So you have two uh, reeds that are like sort of lassoed oh. together and they vibrate against each other in the mouth. And so those double reeds are actually, um, you know, a, a lot less common. We call them our endangered instruments yeah. and we recruit them very aggressively. So, yeah. you, so you have the... Um Alto and tenor, tenor saxophones, they, they, they're reed instruments as well. Right? Yeah, yeah, those are single reed instruments like the clarinet. Where, so you have mm -hmm. the entire saxophone yeah. family. You got the soprano sax, that's like the, you know, Kenny G, like yeah, the short yeah, yeah, one yeah. that's straight. I love that sound. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got the alto sax, which is probably the most common, yeah. and then tenor sax after that. That's probably the most common in jazz, mm -hmm. I would say, like in combos and things like small jazz. Uh, usually, like uh, tenor sax is in there. Then you have the larger ones, the berry sax. You also have the bass sax. Yeah, that big one. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That big one has like a little thing, right? Little. Yeah, the the mouthpiece on it it's looks so thing. small yeah. compared to <laughs> how large the body yeah. is. You know. <laughs> well, so funny. So the 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 crazy thing is that for an orchestra. The saxophones have not sort of made their way into what we call the standard instrumentation. Mm -hmm. So, like, you always have uh, two alto saxophones, two tenor saxophones, and a berry sax in like a jazz band. There's always those five. Yeah. Okay. But in uh, in the uh, in the orchestra world, having a saxophone in in a piece is very very uncommon and very rare. Oh. So we actually like. There are still some pieces every once in a while uh, where we'll need a saxophonist. Mm. And so I have some contacts with band oh. directors in the oh. area and I'll bring oh. in a saxophone. Oh, wow. But also some of our string players, like I said, they go to schools where they don't have uh, an orchestra to play in. So they choose to play in band. And so some of my string players, they're like, oh, I play saxophone. 
I'm like, you play saxophone? Like, yeah, wow. I play in school. Isn't that something? Yeah, so, uh, you know, come, I think, about a year from now, I think I'll have uh, a full saxophone section in my orchestra. It's wow. pretty amazing. Wow. And that is something. Yeah, yeah. And so, so you got brass, right? The brass is... Yeah, so we've got trumpets, mm -hmm. we've got French horns. Oh, I love that sound. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we've got trombones, mm -hmm. and then in each of our top two orchestras, we have a tuba. Oh, a tuba or something else. Like, yeah. You know, it's so interesting that, you know, I love that sound of, from a tuba, yeah. all those brass um, horns. But um, it, it, it's, it's interesting that in youth would pick a tuba, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because, how, you know, how, you know like, like, I'm in the middle of it, the damn thing, right? You know, yeah. and, um, and it's like, I don't know how heavy it is. It's probably a like, lot lighter today. But, um, and they all made out of brass, right? It's, yeah, yeah, all, for sure. Yeah. And so that sound, so, so how many... Key, what, how many keys it has like so the uh the french well all of them have uh what we call three valves three mm -hmm. primary oh, valves mm -hmm. and then some of them have a fourth one as well um or a trigger mm -hmm. that they play with their thumb mm -hmm. but um yeah we have piston brass instruments that's like the trumpet and the the uh the tuba for instance and then we have um instruments with rotors mm -hmm. which are like it's like a rope and pulley system mm -hmm. like a there's a rope pulled around a pulley that yeah. you press, and uh, that's like the, how the French horns are played, right? Mm -hmm. So those are rotor instruments. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, they, but they all basically function the same way. If you're if you're pressing, if you're depressing one of the keys, it's making the tubing of the instrument longer or shorter, so you can play higher or or lower notes, mm -hmm. and that's how they get the full range of the instruments. Because brass instruments used to be all much more simplistic, much more like for instance, the trombone, which mm -hmm. the trombone is just, it's got a slide. So you can, you can uh, make your lips buzz for high notes or low notes, mm -hmm. and then to get the variability in the, uh, in the rest of the notes, you actually have to physically move your hand to make the, make a, make the, um, the slide longer or shorter oh, yeah. to get higher That's or lower nice. notes. So what's the difference between, uh, I think, a, a trumpet and a cornet, is it? A trumpet. Yeah, yeah. so... They uh, both look, a, almost look alike. They do, they do. So the trumpet players, they can take usually their same mouthpiece and actually like play a whole a variety of different instruments. Mm -hmm. So there's the cornet, which is oh, yeah. like, it has a slightly different sound. And also the, there's the flugelhorn. The flugelhorn is like used in jazz a lot. It has a much mellower kind of sound. Um, sounds like almost a hybrid between the trumpet and like a French horn in terms of quality and character. So we call those, um, we call those doubles when uh, an instrumentalist will play uh, an instrument that is very similar to their primary, that's called a double. So uh, like a common one will be like the flute player will also learn how to play the, the tiny little baby flute called the piccolo. Oh. And the clarinet player will learn how to play the giant clarinet called the bass clarinet. Nice. Yeah, and so we have trumpet players that also play flugelhorn, oh. oh, etc. We've got tuba players that play the euphonium, mm -hmm. which is like a sort of like a baby tuba that fits on your lap. Yeah. So, so do you have any um, like um, harp players? Harp. The um, harp. I know we've had some in in the past, but that's uh, that's fewer and farther between to have a student performer. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. That's one of my dreams is that we would actually have uh, harps available that we can rent to students wow. and then have a harp teacher in the area that is giving them lessons at the Ellie Long Music Center so that way VYO and VYP will each have a harp player wow. and they're constantly rotating through. Something. I would love to, to have that. I don't know how many strings, you know, you do, I don't know how many strings they got, but you know, honestly, I don't have Wow, that's seem a lot of, of damn strings. You know? Yeah, for and, sure. And you, when you play it, you play it in chords, but I say go do, 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 yep. but you could, but it also, is it more, you know, like I mean, chords or how you know how you what's the so, rhythm um, of it? Uh, the, it's uh, next time you see a harp, it'll be interesting for you to see. But actually, there's footwork involved. Oh, that's right. So there's a whole bunch pedals. of pedals below them, and right. they're pressing the pedals. And so when you press the pedal, it makes the string tighter, so you get a higher sound. Ah. And then you can actually depress the pedal and bring it closer, oh, and that awesome. that that makes it less tight and actually oh, lowers wow. the pitch. Oh, wow. So they actually can get all the different kinds of notes, mm -hmm. right? Uh, they can get all 12 pitches by pressing down, oh, wow. releasing all of those, yeah. all of those, those pedals. That sound is amazing, you know? Yeah. You're like, you know, you, and you want to know, you want, kind of make you want to think like, what the heck could be going in the, in the musicians? <laughs> what the heck could be going in through their mind? Yeah. You know, first of all, to play a harp yeah. and then and while, play, and while playing a harp, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's, those those are your 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 students and your your musicians are like 
like um, like 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 an army. You, you know, they, they, <laughs> yeah, no, it really is. They, they, it's like an army. They like, I love to see them because they got all these on, like you know this. You know what I mean? Yeah. They uh, go to the stage. You know, they they tuck their their instrument in a certain way. Excuse me, and um, they just look so so good. You know what I mean? That's so funny. Yeah, that's and they got they get all dressed the same. You know, and they're looking so sharp and yeah. Beautiful. Well, that, that's funny that you use the the army analogy because I actually use that a lot. Like, mm. so for string players, I've got I've got you know twenty violins that are all playing the same part. Right, so I call them like the infantry. I have to teach yeah. them. There's so many of them, and they're all playing the same the same notes at the same time. So they have to be much more precise and be militaristic and have all of that uh, sort of infantry kind of right. mentality. Right. And then you have the winds in the back, and they're more like the special ops. Right. Every single one of them is playing a part by themselves. So every note they play is a solo. And so there's a lot of pressure on them actually, like in rehearsal, I might say, oh, could I hear you play that please? And then suddenly one person is playing for the oh, entirety of the group, right? right? <laughs> and that's, that's a hugely you know, scary and intense situation sure. for a lot of these kids, especially yeah. the first few times it happens. No doubt. But you know, for, for like a violinist, that's never ever gonna happen. I'm always gonna have them play as a group. I'm not going to go what oh. we call down the line and hear them play individually. Oh, right. That's not really yeah, a thing. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, the sound you want to hear. This, it's not the sound you want. There should be probably. But um, yeah. I've seen because um, I've been to a couple of your shows at the Flint, and um, and I've seen those um, youth also conduct a, a section. They come up and conduct something. You know what I mean? They come. Yeah. You know, so how cool is that? So how did they get to be able to do that? Are they like the you the first seat? You know, you you <laughs> you play the flute the best. You know, so you you conduct this. You know, brass session or I mean, yeah, I yeah. Know, percussion session. Or well, um, so first of all, that's a hugely humbling experience mm -hmm. when I step off of the podium yeah. and walk away, and the <sighs> kids are able to do it without me. Wow, and that's something. Wow, okay, that's they don't, so cool. they don't need me. You know, they're, they're that skilled. Once yeah. they get to, to, to be, you know, with, with me in my orchestra, the level is so high for them. I mean, we're the, you know, the best youth orchestra in the region, right? Yeah. And um, they get to a level where they can do so much by just using their ears and just listening to each other. And they understand the listening environment and they understand the skill of playing as a group so intimately that they don't need me. I can step off the podium and they're able to do it. So in those moments, it does become fun to pick students to go up and get the opportunity to conduct and then they have such a bigger understanding of oh this is what it sounds like to hear the whole orchestra and not just my little piece of right, it right like this is the full experience right. and also like oh I, they're not reacting the way i want them to oh it takes a while because it's getting 80 people to all do the right. same thing at yeah. the same time right. it takes time it's not instantaneous right. Right. So these kinds of little mechanisms are firing off in their brains when they get those opportunities, and it, I see them grow by leaps and bounds. So every year when we're preparing for our show in the Flynn in December that we call our Orchestra Palooza, I try to find as many opportunities as I can to put kids up on the podium so that way they get that opportunity. And by the end of the year, you know, a couple kids from every section have had that opportunity, and they, they play differently. They perceive it differently. They understand the bigger picture. So that's a useful thing that I like to do. And then in our Orchestra Palooza concert, I actually um, give the baton to an audience member. Oh, I have to guess. Oh, man, I know. I think I've seen that. Yeah, to an audience member. And they get the opportunity to conduct. Wow. And of course, you know, uh, it's going to go great. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes you get a, a, a well trained, well seasoned, seasoned musician up there that knows what they're doing right. and they have a fun time doing right, that. Right. And other times you have people with no experience at all, right. and it's completely foreign yeah. to them. But the orchestra knows how to right. how to help how them help through them. it. Right. <laughs> oh, I seen that at the Flynn on the, I think one of your last show. But um, wow, man, I was, I was like sitting in the audience there, um, and um, and you guys had a full stage of uh, artists performing, artists, musicians, and and then all of a sudden. All around me, people just stood up in the audience. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I didn't even realize that they were there, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All these musicians. I'm like, it's gotta be like 50 of them just, <laughs> just right here around me, and all of them start performing right there in the audience on the stage, man. 
Man, you said you bought, see you said eighty about eighty students or eighty musicians. Yeah, well, we've got we've got uh, seventy plus in the in the top two orchestras, and then we have about fifty in the in the uh, the string orchestra. Yeah. And so when we put them all together at Orchestra de Palooza, wow. we've got almost two hundred kids up there, wow. and so it's and a really so, big deal. I know, I, I love that so much. You know, I'm, I'm from Chicago, so I always see, I love symphonic type music. Yeah, for know. sure. And um, wow, man, this is so. You know, it's always amazing for me to hear you, especially youth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so um, so you you must take them. Um, rehearsals must be in. Um, well, you got some. You got percussions. You got what? What are the, What is it? Percussions. You got bass. You got, yeah. So we also have percussion. So it stems from the timpani drums. They're like large kettle drums with right. with uh yeah um like a, a stretched head over the top and then they have foot pedals that can adjust how high or low those drums are playing ah. so you can get different notes oh, gotcha. and then of course we have all the different kinds of instruments like snare drum and yeah. bass and uh, all the different kinds of uh, percussion instruments that we have um, and then we have our winds and our brass mm. and then we have our string section so they all come together and rehearse together as oh. one big orchestra on sundays uh, all three orchestras rehearse on Sundays oh, okay. in the L.A. Long Music Center, sure. just at different times. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll have what we call sectionals, where I'll say, all right, strings, you stay with me, but brass and percussion and winds, you're all going to go with coaches that, you know, professionals that live in the area right. that play those instruments, and they're going to help you with your parts and teach you more specifically about your instrument. And we have the rooms in our facility to be able to, to do that. So those sectionals, um, you know, the kid, it's always a lot uh, more responsibility on the kids, right? Like suddenly, suddenly the focus is on your part. So those rehearsals are really intense, right? They're playing a lot. And um, they're always scared for them. Like, oh man, it's sectionals this week. Uh, those, are, those are scary days. But then, you know, I poll the kids at the end of the season and ask them what some of their favorite, uh, favorite memories of the season are. And they usually say, oh, I loved sectional time because it was a focus on, on us. And I got to work with my section and it really challenged me and it pushed me. So I try to do that as much as we can, you know, uh, is get, get professionals in to really, really focus on those nitty gritty details. When I put them all back together and have the whole orchestra perform, mm -hmm. all of a sudden it's like, oh, they've grown by leaps and bounds thanks to those sectional times. Right, right. Yeah. So, um, so um, there is no vocals, is it, or, is, or are there? Well, uh, it depends. Uh, usually, for most of the music that we do, it does not have a vocal component, but sometimes we'll have a vocal soloist. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, like at our Orchestra Palooza concert in December, we're actually going to um, uh, have the combined choirs you know, from the high school programs in Chittenden County, and they're going to play along with VYO. So it's going to be a big, and it's a piece from a video game that we're going to be doing too. Oh wow! It's going to be a really fun collaboration. Yeah, I, I love. Well, we have some because you know we have, um, you know, we've done over 700 events in my organization. Are so wonderful, and um, we, you know, we've done a lot of performances. You know. Um, and, and we have a lot of artists, I mean, I, I can think of some people who you know, would be accompanied by a group of your students will be, you know, something incredible, you know what I mean? Um, and we might have to talk about that somewhere down the line, you know. Yeah, for some, sure. I've seen some links to some of our artists like Jordan Corrales who performed at Jazz Fest down there uh -huh. and this last, recently, she's incredible. She actually lived in um, California too. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Okay. I think it's Santa Monica. Uh, uh, yeah, we do a lot of com uh, collaborations in the in the community and have a lot of community partners. I basically try to think through um, through the lens of everything should be a community partnership. No, when we go to the either. Flynn, that's a community partnership. You know, when we come to Arts So Wonderful, that's you know community partnership. Sure. And uh, even like when I go and do school visits, I'm always in the schools as much as I can, and that's that's a partnership. How can I help? You know, how can I use my resources to help the entire community? That's because then we all grow. We, we think all the same. We think the same on that. Just, that's how we've been so successful by using our um, community partners, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and sponsors. Like I always, I always tell everybody, like a, a sponsorship is a partnership, and we gotta help you too. You know, what I mean, do we yeah, exactly. Help, you know, it's not like you're here. Thank you for you know whatever you know. Yeah. And, beat it, you know what I mean? It's like, what can we do to help you as well, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so we've been successful by being that way and, it's, and it makes so much sense because like you said, one thing for sure is that um, you, you, you get this connection with the community it's a it's a long it's a lasting connection. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's um something because you always you you're both working, you both you're giving back. You know what I'm saying yeah. to what mm -hmm. what they might have done for you or 
or or opportunities you might have gave to a, a yeah. youth who might a scholarship you might have gave to a youth to be a part of um, v, uh, VYO and um, and one day they'll come back and like and do something you know incredible for the yeah. organization that and I see that all the time with our organizations like yeah for sure is that you know we have youth advisory boards since um, 2001 yeah and um you know and then we have you know work with the colleges you know United College Club our program work with the colleges and um we help um you know students with like jobs job selling mentoring tutoring yeah. internships and you know and um. And then they come back and they continue to work. You know, when they graduate, they they offer their talent. You know, or, and come back and work yeah. with us and help us because they they understand what our mission goes and objectives are. They understand um, that we might have helped them some way. You know what I mean? And but um, and, and so and they want to help somebody too. You know what I mean? Like we did them. And so yeah. so that's how that's why we're popular as we are. Yeah. You know, we have um. A lot of programs, you know, are so wonderful. Cognitive program, we have Straight Talk Vermont, we have yeah. Vermont Local Art and Music. You know, a lot of programs have been around since primarily around 2003. Uh -huh. And um, and we didn't earn 50 awards for just, you know, over 50 awards for just because, just because, you know. Yeah. It's because we we actually work with the community, you know. Totally. And we've done over 700 events around, the, primarily around the state, but mostly in Cheney County. Mm -hmm. You know, like free outdoor events, parks events, and concerts, and all kind of cool events, like you know, bomb the wall events with murals. We've yeah. done concerts, um, uh, skate bar, skateboard park events. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, like um, this regular, all kind of, you name it, basketball tournaments for over 15 years in Roosevelt Park, and yeah. just all kind of cool things. Just mainly because we want I want to make sure that um, people have um, be able to do what you want to do in life you know what I mean like you know yeah. like a lot of people who couldn't couldn't probably never could paint their art on an electrical box around you know yeah. anywhere. or a mural you know our murals are the best places in Vermont you know what I mean you know, yeah. you know we're not better than nobody but I'm saying they, they like downtown you know you can go show your mural see your link to anyone maybe you can get to a, um, a music school Oberlin or, um, or one of those schools uh, that you can get into because you you know you can show some um, uh, links in which you put it towards your press kit and, and get into these places because yep. uh, and we know people have done that because they have um, been working with us and did some popular things you know get to meet you or somebody even like you yeah. you know what I mean and like wow you send them a nice letter or something saying yeah, yeah exactly this is an amazing kid you know whatever you just you know, need to be able to um, need help to keep, you know, keep getting better, you know. Yeah. You know, and the whole goal is, you know, for me, is like have healthy outlets and education in the some um, safe places, you know. Definitely. And so, um, and so we've been doing that, and so, yeah. um, you know, and, and and I don't make the decision. I'm in charge of everything, but it's more of the people who, like my youth advisory board or people who we work with in the community. You know, yeah. I just, you know, we just we just went we in we're just in you know. And I'm so excited. Yeah. Man, so how many, how many, so um, November 8th is uh, when you're going to perform at our um, Vermont Youth Orchestra is going to perform at our uh, Arts and for Gallery and Performing Center. That is November 8th, Vermont Youth Symphony Orchestra is going to perform at um, our Arts and Wonderful Gallery and Performing Center located in the University Mall next to Target. It's our 8,000 square feet. And so uh, I'm so excited. So how many? So what's so what's what's gonna happen? At, I know you're gonna come in and practice around six, and and then we're gonna do the show around seven or whatever. So what what's gonna happen? What's gonna? I mean, man, I, you put families, right? Yeah, you yeah. Know, we're gonna we got we got some sponsorship for families because we they they deserve to get a break <laughs> instead, of, instead of spending out a lot of money. We're gonna. So I guess you want you say around 60, 60 people, or whatever. Well, so uh, one of the things that I find that helps young musicians to grow the, the, the fastest is to um, put them into what we call chamber groups or smaller ensembles. Because orchestra is, is great, uh, but everybody has one eightieth of the responsibility pie, right? So you take the responsibility of every individual and it's divided equally amongst however many musicians you have on stage. With, in an orchestra, that's a lot. Right. However, if I put them in, like, for instance, a string quartet, all of a sudden your slice of responsibility pie is a quarter of the pie. It's a lot more that, you, uh, that rests upon you individually. So putting the kids into smaller groups is, uh, puts a lot more responsibility on them and also gives them the ability to grow even more. So when I take VYO out into the community, I like to split them up into smaller groups. So on November 8th, what I'm hoping that we'll do is uh, have a youth, uh, the VYO split up into two groups. One will be a winds, brass, and percussion ensemble. 
So that'll be all of our, you know, flute, sobos, uh, trumpets, trombones, percussion, etc. Um, all of them will be in an ensemble together, and we'll do probably a little bit more popular music, you know, stuff from Star Wars, stuff from video games, things like that. That'd be so nice. Yeah, and then our string orchestra is going to perform as well. So we call that we call that a string squad. And uh, that's all of the kids that want additional performance opportunities are going to sign up. And then we have a couple of rehearsals throughout the year. We get started in August and then we have like monthly sort of standing rehearsals to like uh, keep that repertoire fresh and keep it in their fingers. And then we tour it around as often as we can. So we're gonna come to Art So Wonderful. We're gonna play the Virgen's Opera House. We have a couple of opportunities throughout the year that we're gonna wow. do. That's gonna be so nice. Yeah. That yeah. space hold over 300 people. And so, um, and you know, I'm just gonna be excited to see all the parents there. You know, and the one thing I love about our space and the reason why um, we I put that stage right you, where you told me to put <laughs> oh, it. Oh, good, good. You put it where where uh, we talked. Yes, yeah, right. Oh, good. And, and, and everybody was like, "Why do you put it?" I said, "This is." <laughs> <laughs> Boy, Mark said, that's where the stage should go, and that's where I put it there. Yeah. And so when you come in, it's, it's right where you say you put it at. Oh, good, good. So I know, I know. I, I, like you, how many stages have you been on? <laughs> probably more than anybody asked me why the stage is there, you know what I mean? A zillion of them, probably. But um, Virgin Opera House, oh, I like that space. So, so um, what you going to be doing there? Well, I mean, how big is that? You know, I, I forget if I've been in there. Virgin Opera House, I think it's right downtown there, right? Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. So, um, um. I forget. Uh, so what's the seating? I know the Flint's got like 12, 1,400 seats. Yeah, it's got like so, 1,400 seats. Uh, uh, Virgenza is smaller than the Flint. I know that. Mm -hmm. But I can't remember off the top of my head exactly how big it is. Mm -hmm. But I do know that like a lot of these stages, like Barry Opera House and Virgenza, uh, okay. it's Very hard to uh, fit the entirety of the VYO on stage. Mm -hmm. So it's actually good that we break down into yeah. sm uh, to smaller groups. Right. And it makes it just a little bit more manageable. Yeah, sure. And it's a lot of fun for these kids yeah. to get the opportunity to play different types of music mm -hmm. that we can't when I have everybody all together. Right. It's a disservice to some of the kids that aren't involved if I do like during the school year, during my normal rehearsals, if I do music for a smaller ensemble, because we have such a large group and they drive from all out, all throughout the oh, state. No. I've got kids that drive from, you know, uh, across the across yeah. the way in Plattsburgh, New York. Oh, We've got yeah, kids coming awesome all the way from, yeah, the bottom of the state, the Northeast yeah. Kingdom, like yeah. all over the place. Yeah. That's so special because, you know, that shows you where their passion is and that um, to be a part of, um, you know, VYO view, view is incredible. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I would drive from, yeah. well, I'll paddle my little canoe across the dam. <laughs> to get over there or whatever. Well, you know, it's a, it's a large responsibility having, or, you know, I'm captaining the ship of, of the artistic ship sure. of, of the Vermont Youth Orchestra Association. And when I talk to educators throughout the state, they say, you know, you're called the Vermont Youth Orchestra Association. What are you doing to serve the entire community of Vermont? Because it's a, it's a, it's a tall order. Yeah. So, you know, we also, in addition to our orchestra programs, which are our auditioned opportunities, right? So those are things that like the students come in, in May and play for me. And if they are at a certain threshold, then we accept them into our orchestra programs. But, you know, what about, what about opportunities to grow kids no matter what their entry point is? What about eliminating barriers of entry, right? So what we do is we have trainer programs that, um, that we start for kids that are non-audition opportunities, or what I like to call the y'all come opportunities, right? <laughs> so we've got kids of all different ages yeah. and all different experiences that come in and we have string orchestras from them. We have a percussion ensemble where they can learn uh, how to read music and how to play the instruments for the first time with great technique. Um, and also we've got, uh, we've got a string ensemble as well that we call Presto. And that's like the very first time that some of these kids have ever played with a group and they're learning skills like how to follow a conductor, how to listen to the person next to you and how to make your bow uh, go at the same time, at the same speed, use the same amount. And all these sorts of skills are cultivated and taught and fostered no matter what uh, ability or age you are. Because that's something that I think is really important. There needs to be like, if a student is interested in, in music, there needs to be a place where they can go, and no matter what their age or ability, there has to be an entry point for them. Sure. There has to be a way for them to get involved. And then once they're in, whatever they're doing, whatever group it is, whether it's auditioned or not, it has to be about excellence and right. getting the kids to a high level and making them feel good about the quality of what it is that they're presenting. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we're doing. And another thing we're trying to do is try to get out into other parts of the state. 
So some of our training programs, we're going to put them in the Northeast Kingdom. We have one in Franklin County that's launching next year. Mm -hmm. We're we're thinking about expanding down into Rutland, into other yeah, areas. Into Paramount down there. Yeah, exactly. The Paramount Theater. Yeah, yeah. I was just in there last month for the first time. It was amazing, amazing space. They 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 um, they, they still unique to how it was built, how it is when they first opened that place up. Oh, they get cool. their hard wooden floors. Yeah. And, you know, and that's funny. It's so cool though. Yeah, yeah, very amazing. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is there's such like a rich cultural tradition around performance spaces in Vermont. And I'm trying to figure out ways to get us there and for uh, ways for us to, to do outreach and to show kids that no matter what your socioeconomic status is, no matter what your Definitely, background yeah. is, yeah. no matter yeah. where you're located in the state, there's an entry point for you. There's a place where you can go and you can be successful and your your art can be can be elevated, can be enculturated, can be can be uh, you know, you can there's a place for you to learn and grow. So let me ask you come, you know, um and I saw all this all of that is so amazing and I'm so proud of these youth who are want to do some positive things for themselves that are you know um drinking drug and uh, you know being in hybrid situations yeah, you know sure. um um so we always need these things for for youth to you you know based on what their goals and dreams and aspirations are and i know music has got to be one of their goals dreams and aspirations and to be able to perform for boomerang youth orchestra it's got to be one of the biggest things ever for anybody in this whole entire world you know what i mean i'm, I'm guaranteeing you that um one of the questions you mentioned Bo. You know, you know, so yeah. going back a little bit, but um, now is that made out of horse hair? I mean, is it? What is what is the the, the um what is the the yeah? So stuff? typically, there it's horse hair oh, that yeah, um yes. yeah, and uh so there's like a little a little screw on the bottom that tightens it and loosens it, and so when it's tightened, and then also when it uh, when you put rosin on the bow, it's like a like a tree sap. When you put that on the bow, then it catches on the string so when you actually are drawing it across the string wow. it's catching and that's what's making the string vibrate and come alive as it resonates through the rest of the so instrument it comes like in a little packet or something because yeah. you got you can't kind of count 500 strings in or something uh, well, yeah usually you take it to uh to a to a shop, oh, shop and, they yeah, do it for and you. then they'll they'll uh they'll that's called a rehair and oh. so every couple of years depending on how much you're you're uh, using your bow You'll, your bow will have to get rehaired, oh, right? Because it gets thinner, and also some break off as you play, and so uh, and it doesn't it doesn't work it doesn't glide across the strings the same way once it's broken in like that. So you need to have a rehair. Yeah. Same with the strings. The strings have to get changed oh, every once in a while yeah, because yeah. they'll start sounding too thin and tinny, oh. and so they need to get uh, get new strings. Mm. And um, and it takes a while for those new strings to break in. They'll be playing, and the the strings will uh, will go out of tune very quickly. <laughs> Like, oh, that doesn't sound right. And they'll have to stop and they'll have to retune. Mm -hmm. And then they'll play for a few minutes and then, oh, that doesn't sound right. It's, it's out of tune again. Right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then they, as they learn how to, how to, you know, as they break in, they learn how to be strings that are on this instrument, right? Then uh, it's, uh, they, they start to sound even better and they keep their intonation for a lot longer, et cetera. Yeah. Mark, so... Um once again, this is Al Mark Alpazar, <laughs> music conductor, er, director for Vermont Youth Symphony. Well, youth Orchestra. I'm not going to call it symphony for some reason. Vermont Youth Orchestra. How incredible is that? So, um, I'm, I'm a, so a lot of people don't know this, but I'm, I'm the governor appointment. I'm a um, commissioner for um, human rights commissioner for the mm -hmm. state of Vermont. So I'm for the whole entire state. I'm a commissioner. And I'm a commissioner for. Um, uh, Winooski uh, School District oh, anti-racism wow. and I'm sitting on um, the advisory board for Greenmount Channel for anti for justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion um, board and some other ones. You know, all the boards I sit on. Yeah. So, so in this world, day of age of diversity, equity, inclusion. Yeah. So in your music, you know, um, I mean, you know, I don't, you know. So how do you how do you um, connect with that diversity, equity, include? I mean, are you playing like Miles Davis or I don't know, but um, yeah, yeah. you know, how do you how do you connect with um, people of color or, or BIPOC? You know, how do you connect with those individuals? Because yeah. you know, Vermont is being very unique, being a, now the second whitest state in America. It's kind of really difficult. Yeah, for, for even for like three people, three black people in the same room at the same time with me, it's like, damn, how, how, <laughs> how big is that? Yeah, you know what I mean? Sure. You know, so so uh, so it's it's a little it's kind of. I know it's you know it's you know it's not I'm gonna say difficult but it's it's not yeah. it's, it's easy but so so what is your um, take on um, that? Well, so for uh, student population, obviously, is a metric that we track very carefully, and so when we actually 
when we actually looked at our BIPOC representation in the orchestra, it was very good. It was um, a, a very, very high percentage, awesome. which, which was awesome. Yeah. But we said, well, instead of resting on our laurels and saying that's good enough, how can we reframe this? How can we take a look? And so what we did is we we um, started taking things out of it, right? Like, well, what about um, if we keep our black and brown musicians in there, but pull out AAPI? Because we, uh, on a national trend, see a lot of AAPI musicians throughout the orchestra field. So what if we take them out? Suddenly the picture looks a little bleaker. And then we say, all right, well, instead of saying, well, our diversity target should be whatever whatever the BIPOC uh, number is in the state of Vermont, what about if we did Chittenden County? Okay, suddenly that's a much larger number. No doubt about it. And then what about if we did Burlington specifically? What about if we did, took out all the different ages and said 18 and younger, BIPOC 18 and younger? So we kept aggressively making our metric that we're trying to meet um, even, even steeper. So that way we're looking for pathways to be more inclusive and to uh, make sure that we're reaching out to communities of color and making sure that we keep them enrolled in our orchestras. And without saying, you know, we've, we've hit our target or we've right. done our well, thing. Well, it's right. like, yeah. Yeah. well, there's yeah. got to be better ways. Yeah, there's got to be better ways and, you know, see, see what they got. So that's, out there. yeah, so that's how we're, we're tackling it from the diversity standpoint. Mm -hmm. But then also there's the, um, in terms of inclusion, uh, that falls on me and how I program music. So, of course, the majority of, of the orchestral tradition is well, dead white guys. That's right. who wrote the music, right? It's, right. it's stuff from, it's Euro, a European tradition. So there is a lot of that. So it skews towards that. But of course, here in America, there's been an orchestral tradition for hundreds of years now. And it unfortunately has excluded women. It has excluded people of color. And it's been very difficult to, um, you know, people have been marginalized throughout that. Composers have been marginalized. Orchestral musicians have been marginalized. So what I need to do is take a look at the repertoire that's available to me and say, how can I expand what I'm including? How can I expand genre-wise? So can I do something from hip hop? So my, my friend, uh, Daniel Bernard Remain, I've done a couple of his hip hop studies. I've arranged them for orchestra and we've done some, you know, some hip hop for the orchestra. And some of the kids come up to me afterwards and go, I've never thought that I would get a chance to play this kind of music and I love this kind of music and we're doing it in the orchestra. So there's an example of inclusion. Awesome. So we're trying to do stuff like that. And then also uh, film music, music from video games, oh, yeah. things that really speak to yeah. the students today. No doubt about it. Yeah. And then also doing the homework. I mean, I can't tell you how many of, uh, you know, conductors I've talked to over, over the course of my career who have said things like, well, I'm gonna keep doing the repertoire that I know because that music is it's been vetted and it's been it we know it's great we know that beethoven's fifth symphony is great it's a surefire way to sell tickets and it's a surefire way for um for the audience to enjoy it so we should keep doing it i do agree i think that a lot of what we call our orchestral canon should continue to be played of course no, no. however there's homework to be done like i should be looking at uh, composers uh, from all different backgrounds, you know, and really taking a hard look at their uh, their music and being as discriminating as I am to the works of Beethoven, and finding those pieces that are really, really worthy of study, and saying, you know what, I've put a lot of time and effort into this composer, and I know that this is a great piece of music, and I know that the audience is going to love it, and then putting it out there and showing that that is the truth. So every year I try to include music from composers of all different backgrounds and really, really make sure that I'm not doing it because I'm checking a box, right, but right. I'm doing it because this, this is really actually good art music because yeah. I've put as much time as I did into my Beethoven symphony mm -hmm. to let you know that this is a really, really good piece know, of music. Those, those Beethoven um, symphonies and um, Waltz and all those people, they have incredible sounds. Man. Yeah. Man, those, those instruments and just to be able to play that like so eloquently and just so beautifully and so wonderfully yeah. and all those it's something to hear boy. so well, I you know I, I would never want nobody to stop doing that yeah, exactly they, you know how much work they put into that that's right you know, those composers and there's a tradition Jesus. of of how to play it too right I mean like like me, I know how to play those Beethoven symphony. I played them as a young musician, and now I've conducted them all, many, you know, many times. And so there's like a, a tradition that that I understand that I am able to impart very well. But at the same time, it's like, well, uh, if I keep doing the same the same repertoire, that's what's going to have the tradition baked into it. But if I expand my horizons and do lots of performances of, say, the Black American composer William Grant Still, 
if I do a bunch of performances of his music, that'll become a part of my DNA as well, and oh, yeah, that's yeah. what I can ex uh, extend to my students. Yeah. So, like, I just took them to Greece. I took the VYO yeah, to Greece. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. Greece. Yeah. So, um, you know, I wanted to do a lot of the uh, really amazing uh, music that has existed for, you know, for a, a long, rich tradition. We did a couple of movements from uh, a piece by Gustav Holst called The Planets. So we did Mars and Jupiter, which are like some of the most celebrated uh, pieces in, in the orchestra repertoire. The kids loved it. They thought it was wonderful. The audiences went crazy in Greece. They loved it. But also, speaking of William Grant Still, we did a piece about um, yeah, called Song of the Rivermen, which is about, you know, the, the ferrying boat, uh, b uh, ferrying, ferrying the boats across the Mississippi River. And it like had this wonderful American sound. And to take that to Greece and have the opportunity to play it for them and have an American orchestra that understands it so innately, right? Uh, and I, the audiences were really like, sort of, sort of awestruck by it, you know, like, wow, they're playing part of their cultural tradition for us, you know, thousands of miles away. And so that was really special. And then of course we did, uh, we did music, the dancing music from Zorba the Greek. And you know, the first two notes, but and all of a sudden the, uh, the audience is just erupted. They yeah. know that music. It's yeah. part of their DNA. Right. Exactly. It's part of their culture. It's universal, man. Yeah. Yeah. So nice. they were, they were clapping along and that was the first time, uh, that my musicians had really seen that kind of a visceral reaction to orchestra music right like where people were jumping up and clapping and applauding and and uh you know being a part of the performance almost as an audience member and that was like a new experience for these kids right like whoa and we were in these big outdoor amphitheaters and you know hundreds of people that had come to see them as part of these festivals and uh, it was just uh it was an it was an amazing experience Definitely. Oh, that's so incredible. So before we wrap this up, why don't you just look in your, your camera and tell everybody knows what, what what's coming up for you, where they can see um, Vermont Youth Orchestra, where they can um, um, you know catch you catch you you know yeah, what's sure. your next performances. Uh, well, I invite you all to head over to vyo.org. That's our website, and there you can find our schedule of all of the VYO concerts, as well as the VYP and the VYS concerts and our season schedule. We have one in October. We have one in our Orchestra Palooza in December, and then we have one in February at the Flynn, and in May at the Flynn, and then we'll have lots of other additional opportunities. Also, if you're a performer yourself and would like to get involved, you can find information on how to uh, audition for our performances and for our groups uh, uh, on our website as well. And then also, if you're a community member that would like to play, you can play with the VYO towards the end of the year. We actually have open rehearsals, and we have an opportunity for you to come and play with us. So no matter what your age, no matter what your background, no matter what your experience, we have a place for you at VYO. So visit VYO.org to find some more. No doubt about it. Thanks, Mark. And this on, on the next thing, I was going to say, I'm so excited that... Um, VYO is going to be performing at um, Art So Wonderful Gallery and Performing Center located in the University Mall next to Targets on November 8th. And it's going to be like, um, like start at 7 p.m. When you hear all about it, it's going to be all on um, Art So Wonderful um, um, social media. Um, yeah, it's all on all our social media. Awesome. So thank you, sir. Yeah, Thanks thank for you, being Bruce. on our show. Yeah, of course. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Hey, you too. Yeah.